I have my Azure load balancer set up and this is what it looks like. So I'm coming from the outside world. I'm hitting a public IP address, which is on my load balancer here. This is my subscription and this is my VNet. And within my subnet here, I've got two web servers. At the minute, one is down. I've got this one down just to save on Azure costs. So this one is up and running on 10.117. And I have some basic health probes to ensure the web servers are up and running as well using TCP port 80. And if we minimize this diagram, we can test it. So if I minimize that and I type in the IP address 51.142.88.62 and we get a basic internet information services page. So I've got a basic IIS service up and running on that virtual machine. But the thing I wanted to do is have a look at the configuration settings of the load balancer. So if we go into Azure and then we click on load balancers, this is my load balancer. It's called LB-Web. So if we click on LB-Web, we can have a look at how it's been configured. And in the middle here, we've got overview, we've got the settings, we've got monitoring, automation, support and troubleshooting. But the piece I wanted to have a look at is the settings. And some of it you can see on the right hand side here as part of the overview. So we can see the resource group, location, subscription, the subscription ID, the SKU we're using, the tags, backend pool, load balancing rules, health probes, NAT rules, and tier as well. But if we go into the front end IP configuration, that's the IP configuration to connect to the public IP address from the outside world. Or it can even be a private IP address as well. Looking into it, we can see mine is a public IP address that we have already just tested. So this is all that there is in the front end IP configuration here, and you can add other IP addresses from here as well. Let's have a look at the backend pools. The backend pools, which are the web servers themselves, that the load balancer will distribute the load to. I've only got one at the minute, just to keeping costs at a minimal, but we can see it's up and running, and that's the pool name web backend pool. We can click this and have a look inside it as well. And we can see our client one here on IP address 10.1.1.7. We can add further web services from here and we can remove them as well from here. And at the bottom here, you can see that there's a list, the list of load balancing rules, inbound net rules and outbound rules used by this backend pool. We only have the one LB load balancing rule. We will have a look at this shortly. Let's go back to load balancing. Let's go back into LB-Web, my load balancer. And the next one down is the health probes. And the health probes, which checks if the server within the backend pool are responding, so up and running. I've got a very basic health probe checking TCP port 80 is responding. My health probe is called HP. And you can see the parameters on the right hand side here. And it's used by this rule LB. So if we click into it here, we can see the configuration parameters inside here. So we can change this protocol to HTTP as well from here if we wanted to. And then we can put in a path, the URI used for requesting the health status from the backend pool endpoint. If we wanted to be more specific about the particular website on the web server. So we can do that, but I've only got the one website, the one web server, so I'm fine with TCP port 80 works absolutely fine for my example here so that's the health probe these just check if the web service is up and running and if it's not it will take the web service the virtual machine out of the equation and start to redistribute the traffic to the remaining web servers and once the web server that has failed is back up and running it will start to send traffic to it again and the next one we want to have a look at is the load balancing rules so i've only got the one if we click into this here and this is how you want to load balance the traffic and this is like the glue it joins everything together in here so we have my front end ip address here and then we have the back end pool and uh, then it shows the protocol we're using tcp the port the back end port the health probe so that's the health probe we have just had a look at we can use session persistence if we wanted to go to the if we want the client that's connected to keep going to the same virtual machine the same web server and we have a couple of other options in here as well. Idle timeout in minutes, where it keeps the connection open without relying on clients to send keep alive messages. 
and then we've got the floating ip option in here as well if we go back to the load balancer again and we go to inbound nat rules from here now i've got none i've got no inbound nat rules i don't need any for my example but if you have any specific inbound nat requirements so this is not load balancing but using the load balancer to facilitate an inbound nat service to get to a particular service from the outside world let's say remote desktop protocol to a jump box or something so you're setting up natting from the outside world you're doing a nat into your environment to a particular service so let's say a jump box again to rdp onto the jump box to get to your other services via the jump box so that's an example it's not it's not doing load balancing it's not distributing your traffic across multiple web services or multiple services it's just not in the connection to a particular virtual machine or service and finally the properties and the properties is things like the load balancing type used and the SKU and things like that and they're the main settings of a load balancer web service it's a layer 4 load balancer and if you're using only the load balancing component of it, it works within a region. So you're not using the cross regional load balancer, you're just using the load balancer itself. It's regional based. And if we wanted to create a load balancer, we can type in load balancer at the top here. We've got some options here. We can also use this option to help you choose the correct load balancer. So you might need the application gateway, for example, or front door, Z or front door. Or you may need just the basic load balancer, which is the lay for load balancer. So let's click on the lay for load balancer. And then we can click on the create option here. And, and we've got the usual stuff at the beginning, the subscription and the resource group. And we give it a name and then we put it inside a region. So I'm not going to do this as I've already done mine. It's just have a look at the settings in here. But the SKU, you've got three SKUs. You've got the standard SKU, which is enabled by default because it's the most common one. We've also got a gateway SKU, and this is used when you are using load balancing with network virtual appliances. And it's been designed for high performance and high availability scenarios with third party network virtual appliances like firewalls, IP systems, DDoS protection, advanced analytic systems and other appliances as well. So you'd use the gateway for that particular scenario with third party appliances. Otherwise, we would stick to the standard. So you should stick to the standard SKU. But for testing purposes and evaluation and training purposes, you could choose the basic SKU as well. But just to bear in mind, you will not get all the possible load balancing features with the basic SKU. So depending on which SKU you select here, the remaining configuration options will differ slightly. So we've got the standard SKU here, but if we click on basic SKU, we can see at the bottom here, the tier changes. So the basic SKU does not allow you to have the global tier. It's only regional based. And with the tier, this is where you select whether your load balancer is balancing within a region called regional or across regions. It's called global or it's called a cross regional load balancer as well. And obviously this is grayed out with the basic SKU. And then there's the type, it can be public or internal. So the public load balancer is tied to a public facing IP address for requests coming from the public internet, which maps those requests from the public IP, known as the front end IP pool, to the private IP addresses, which are the services, also known as the backend pools again, within the Azure environment. And this can be virtual machines or application instances. And then you've got the internal, and you can see actually when we selected internal we can use the gateway SKU. so the gateway SKU can only be used with the type internal here and the internal is the private load balancer it's used to translate a private ip address to a group of virtual machines or instances in a virtual machine scale set so internal load balancers are used to load balance traffic from internal azure resources to other azure resources inside the virtual network and they can also be accessed from an on-premise network as well where you have a hybrid deployment really to be honest that's the main gotcha about understanding how to create the load balancer is the SKU, the type and the tier so you need to so you just need to know these options what they are and which ones you will be using depending on your requirements but you also have after basic you have the front end ip configuration which we just need a, a test name and a region in here 
as well as a resource group before it will allow us to move on let's click on next and then we can add our front end IP addresses in here to get started so add a front end IP configuration and then on the right hand side we can do that from here we can specify if it's dynamic or static as well and we can specify an availability zone here as well and then we've got the back end pool so the back end services so we need to specify this to be able to move on let's click it again let's give it a name test front end hyphen front end and a subnet we'll go with our web server subnet and let's click on static or let's leave it as dynamic so i don't need to specify an ip address and let's click add here and then we can move on to back end it won't let me click it for me actually i have to do next here so add a back end pool i would add my i would add my services in here i could add NICs or IP addresses and IP version, IP version 4 or IP version 6 and then I can specify the virtual machines from here, add here or I can use virtual machine scale sets within here as well. So if I clicked on add here, I can only see my client one virtual machine because that's the only virtual machine I've got up and running and configured within the SEO environment. Let's click cancel here. Let's go back to create load balancer and go to next inbound rules we can see inbound rules here so inbound so add a load balancing rule from here or we can add a inbound nat rule again as i've already specified load balancing rules will distribute the traffic amongst your web services or or any services actually i keep calling it web services but it can be any services with the standard lay for load balancer web service traffic you would usually use the application gateway solution instead if you need a bit more focus to spot your web services such as sl offloading and using cookies and things like that all lay seven type things and then the inbound that is to get to a particular service from the outside world so this is not load balancing Let's go to outbound rule. If you've got any outbound rules, so if your web services need to get out to the internet, this is where you would configure that. So you might have web services that need to get to their specific vendor. So you might have the IIS web service that I've configured. I might need that to go to Microsoft to retrieve updates. And this is where you would set the outbound rules. And the final two is the usual two tags. If you wanna create tags and then review and create to confirm your settings. And job done you can create your load balancer from here shows the validation has passed but i'm not going to do this i have already created mine so once again just to keep in mind if we go back to basics this is the area you want to be fully familiar with the skew the type and the tier